Happy New Year, everyone. Woo! We made it in the new year, and I hope you guys had a fabulous Christmas. I did. I had plenty of food, and then I took an amazing nap right after I had my amazing Christmas lunch. We had a lunch, not a dinner. Um, I hope you guys are excited for this year. You guys are super pumped to see what God's going to do this year. Oh my goodness, blaze and eternity. Are you guys excited? Because I am and I'm ready for the year. Um, so I just want to welcome you guys and say, hey everyone, hey everyone. It's good to see you. Good to see old faces. Yes, yes. And good to see new faces. Welcome, welcome boys and girls who are in grade three. We welcome you. And bye to the grade fives. They're off to grade six. Such amazing things are happening this year. Um, but on today's thing that is happening, we have a lovely talk coming from Bryony. Whoop, whoop. And then Luyanda is going to be showing us a memory verse. I hope it's a wrap. I hope it's an action video. We never know. We keep it crazy in this blaze and eternity room. I'm so excited. So stay tuned for the talk. It could be worship. I'm not sure. Hope that's on you. Bye, everybody. Let our praises remind all the darkness of how great and how mighty our God is. For the battle belongs to the Lord and no one else. We are standing in holy defiance. We're declaring aloud in the silence that the battle belongs to the Lord and no one else, no one else. We'll sing hallelujah for all hell to hear. Shout kingdom advances as we take back the ground from the darkness the battle belongs to the lord and no one else you're the banner we raise in the chaos no the gates of hell won't stand against us the battle The troubles, the trials, the shadows, the sorrows, the long nights, the hard fight. We are the prophets, the voice in the darkness, declaring the battle.
Good morning, guys. I am so excited to be starting this new series with all of you today on Joseph. So a little bit of background information before we start into the story, just to let you guys know who exactly is Joseph. So some of you might remember the story of Abraham. He was called the father of nations and God promised to him that through him there would be a massive generation of people. Uh, but Abraham was really old at the time and he didn't have any children and he wasn't sure how this was going to happen. And you guys might remember some of you the story of how he then had a son called Isaac and Isaac was his only child and then God even asked him to sacrifice Isaac and Abraham was obedient to that and God saved Isaac and Isaac continued to grow and he eventually married Rebekah and Isaac and Rebekah had two sons Jacob and Esau and you got some of you might remember the story as well of how Jacob stole Esau's inheritance and he got his father's uh, blessing and he went out and he he actually married two women and from these two women, Jacob had 12 children and Joseph was his 11th child. So imagine that the second youngest in a massive family. And this is where we fit Joseph in now and we're going to start his story. So I'm going to read a little bit for us. Um, I'm going to just go through some sections in the, Bible, uh, in the passage and then we can talk through it. Now Jacob loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age. And he made him a richly ornamented robe. And when his brothers saw that his, their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of corn out in the field, when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of this dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. So imagine this, right? Joseph is very loved by his father, and that makes his brothers very jealous. And then he comes and tells them he had a dream where they're all going to bow down and honor him like a king before them or a great leader. That must have been quite a crazy thing to say to your, your family. Imagine that. But Joseph had had these dreams from God, and God had told him that these things are things that were going to happen. And so Joseph held on to these promises throughout everything that came to follow, such as the story of what his brothers then did to him. So Joseph went into, went into the field to where his brothers were working, and as they saw him in the distance, they said, Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns, which is a well, and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this well here in the desert, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the richly ornamented robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the well. Now the well was empty and there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm and myrrh, and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him after all. He is our brother, our own flesh and blood. Blood. His brothers agreed. And so when the Midianite merchants came by, his brother pulled Joseph out of the well and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. So God's plan for Joseph, as we can see kind of from these dreams and as we'll see carrying on in the story, 
was for him to be a leader and a rescuer of his people. But where we end this story now, and actually this whole story this morning, that's not really what's happening, right? Joseph started off as the most loved son of his family, and that made him the object of jealousy from his brothers. And he ended the story as a slave in Egypt. And the passage does tell us he was a slave to a very important man, which will be useful for him later. But right now, nothing really seems very hopeful from the story. It just seems like everything has gone wrong for Joseph. And it started off so well, and it's gone so bad now. And Joseph could have been sitting there and going, but God, you promised in these dreams that I'd be a great leader. And where is that now? And so for us, we can have the same thing sometimes. Stuff can go so difficult in our lives and it can seem hopeless and it can seem like there's no way out of this. You know, when you're a slave, you're a slave forever. There's no real hope of ever getting out of slavery. So for Joseph, it was a very hopeless moment. And sometimes we can have hopeless moments like that where we just want to give up and say, but God, nothing's going well for us. How can this be your amazing plan for us? But it's important to know that God does have a plan for us. He has a plan for each and every one of us. And just like as we carry on in Joseph's story, we'll see what happens next and how this can maybe be turned around. For us, it's the same thing. We are in the middle of God's plan for us. It's not the end yet. And so things look really hopeless now. But we've got to be confident in God's plan and we've got to trust in him. And I think it's important that we should try and imitate Joseph's behavior in this difficult time because even though Joseph had all these difficulties and he was sold into slavery and his brothers that says they hated him, Joseph still trusted and worshiped God through this, um, even when everything was going really, really badly. And we can we should be trying to do the same. We should be trying to trust and worship God um, even in our difficult times rather than just giving up and feeling hopeless uh, or fighting with God maybe. Uh, it's important to trust in his plan for us. Um, and specifically, we now don't have to just rely on dreams that we get from God, but we have the Bible and the Bible is full of God's promises for us. And so if you guys want to go through, you can see all the awesome promises God has given to us. And these promises are promises that God has given to us, which means they will definitely come true. And so even when you're sitting around maybe and looking now and saying, I can't see any of God's promises that have come true for me. It's important to remember that in God's timing and when God, God has a perfect plan for his timing and those promises will come true for us and they will fit perfectly in the plan that he has for our lives. And so I just want to encourage you guys in the next week, the next month, this year, as we keep going to just really just trust in God and hold on to his promises for us and hold on to his plan for us, even when Things are looking really difficult at the moment. And next week, we'll see if maybe things can improve for Joseph and if God's plan can start coming through for him and there can be improvements and we can see God's promise really working out for Joseph. Cool. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. I'm Leander and I'm reading today's memory verse. It's from Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, and it goes... You intended it to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. Hey guys, so a good way I thought of memorizing this is writing it on the board and then erasing words as we go. So then you have to fill in the blanks so you can memorize it better. So let's try with what I've erased so far. And it goes, you, it, for, to harm, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives. Genesis 50, 20. Okay, I hope you guys got that. Okay guys, now I'm gonna take away more words. So, let's take away. Okay, now let's try to say it with these words taken away. You, it, to harm, but God intended it for good. To, what is being done, the saving of, Genesis 50 verse 20. Okay guys, this one's extra hard. Look at all the words that I'm missing. Now let's try it one more time. You, it, to harm, but intended it for, to, what is being done. The, of, you can fill in the missing verse, 50 verse 20. Well done guys. I hope you memorize today's memory verse and I hope you have a good rest of your week. Bye!